Hey guys, this is Miss Eisenhower, and I wanted to show you a few different things today about a new kind of material that we haven't used this year. But first, let's talk about something you already know about. So, Play-Doh. We guys, I'm sure everybody's seen this before, probably have even used it. And if we open it up, you guys know it's very squishy. Sometimes you have to dig it out of the bottle. But it's really easy to use. I mean, it's very simple to squeeze. We could build things out of it. We could take it apart and stick it back together. It's sticky. Um, if we pressed it down, we could probably use a cookie cutter and make different shapes out of it. But most of you guys have all used Play-Doh before. Um, and from doing that, you know that if you leave Play-Doh out of the can or you don't put the whole entire cap back on it, then it's going to dry very hard, okay? We don't want to see Play-Doh like this because then, can you use this anymore? No, not really. You can't use this anymore. So, you don't want your Play-Doh to turn out hard like this. So that's Play-Doh, and we've all used it before. Today, we're actually not going to use Play-Doh. I'm going to let you guys play around with this, which is called a modeling clay. This modeling clay is special because it doesn't dry out. So, it's going to be a little bit harder to squeeze, like you really have to squeeze it hard. And once you start moving it around a little bit, it will be easier. But, like I said, this is going to be harder to squeeze. It's a modeling clay. does not dry out, and this is what you're going to get to play with today. Everyone will have their own color, so don't use anybody else's. Just use yours. You don't need to share. You have your own. Um, and I'll show you a few things you can make here in a minute. But I just wanted to show you this type of clay that you're using. Also, this is man-made. This is not from the earth. This is not natural. This is what people have made. That's how it doesn't dry out. Play-Doh's the same thing. Play-Doh's not natural. I couldn't go outside and find Play-Doh. Okay, it's man-made too. So, let me put this to the side and talk a little bit about real clay. So, this is what we'll be using next week when we make our pottery. Real clay is more natural colors. They're not the bright colors like the modeling clay. You have grays, browns, reds, tans, all those colors. Those are real clay. And again, like Play-Doh, if you let it sit out and you let it dry, it gets really white and very breakable and fragile, like this piece just broke off of it. So one thing you have to do with this kind of clay is you have to put it in an oven and let it bake. It's called a kiln. After you let it bake, it becomes very, very hard. You can put glazes on it and colors on it and I mean, unless I threw this on the ground, it wouldn't break, okay? This is very strong and very hard. So, we'll be using this kind of clay in order to make something you can take home. This is actually something I could drink out of, too. So, this will be a type of clay called pottery because it's functional. You can use it versus something like this, which is really pretty and shiny. The shaker. But this is something you couldn't use to drink or eat out of. So, this is more sculptural. And this guy is kind of in the middle. Again, he's made out of clay. He looks like he's something you would drink out of. But he kind of looks dirty. I wouldn't want to drink out of that. I don't know about you. But anyway, let me go back to this clay and show you a few things we can make out of it, okay? So first thing you're going to want to make today when you're playing with your clay, make sure you know how to make a ball. The easiest way, and I'm going to break some of this off. The easiest way to make a ball is to roll your hands like they're in a circle, okay? Or you could do it on the table. But go in a circle pattern, and then you'll be able to turn it into a ball. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want you guys to know how to do that. So I'm getting there. It's getting rounder. I might go to the table and go in circles. Rounder and rounder. Sometimes I have to pinch it to go back into the right place. But close enough, right? Kind of looks like a sphere now, like a circle. Alright, so I have my ball, and I want to show you a few things that you can make out of this. So learn how to make the ball first, practice that, and then you can make a coil. Now, you might not know what a coil is, but I'm sure you've made one out of Play-Doh. It is a long string of clay, okay? Looks like a snake. So to make a coil, if you haven't ever made one before, I'm going to go forward and backward when I roll it. So forward and backward, forward and back, and you can already see it's turning into a log, right? That's good. Just keep it even. If I go in one spot the whole time, this side is getting smaller than this side, right? 
So I'm going to go forward and backward, and I'm moving my hand back and forth too to try to keep it even. Because if I stay in one spot, it's going to get really skinny. Look how long my snake is. I'm doing pretty good. If you guys want to at your tables today, you could have a little competition to see who can make the longest snake and be able to pick it up. You can make a necklace this way. You can make different things using the coil. You could just make a circle and start to make a bowl. You could roll it up and make a spiral. But this is one thing you need to know how to make when you start to work with clay. So here's my spiral. All right, now, good thing about clay, Play-Doh, all these things, I can squish it up and start all over. So I learned how to make a ball, learn how to make a coil. Now we're gonna make what I call a slab. To make a slab, you want to start again with a ball. So let me get my ball back. Get it back in the circle. All right, close enough, right? To make a slab, this is just like what you would do if you were make, using the cookie cutter to make a shape. So I'm going to press it down with one hand. Put one hand on top. Put the other hand. You might even want to stand up for this because you really want to press it down. And it's going to be harder with the colored clay because that's harder to work with. But really press it down and then flip it over. And press again and again try to stay even because if you press too hard on one side guess what it's going to be too thin and it's going to tear apart right all right let me try to get this up and press it one more time we're making little pancakes that's kind of what you're doing when you press a slab you're making a pancake you're making it really flat you don't want to make it too skinny because you want to be able to build out of it but you make it really flat so here is my slab, so you guys can see it, the big, the really thin, really thin pancake. All right, so there's my slab. I'm going to roll it up again, try to get some of this clay off the table. Here we go. One more time. Now we're going to make a pinch pot. So again, I'm starting with a ball of clay. This time, I'm not rolling it, I'm not pressing it. This time I'm going to stick my thumb in it. So it looks like my thumb has a little afro or something, some kind of crazy hair. I'm going to stick my thumb in it, and then I have the hole for where my thumb is. I'm going to pinch it like I'm a crab. I'm just going to pinch, 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 pinch. I'm going to let my fingers do the work. So I'm holding it in place with my thumb. I'm going to pinch, pinch down, pinch down. So here we go. Pinching down, and then I turn it. Pinch down, turn, pinch down, turn, pinch down, turn. Now it's getting bigger on the inside, so I can use two thumbs. And I can do it on both sides. Again, you want to stay even. If you pinch too hard, you will definitely make a hole. This is the hardest thing to do, is to stay even so you don't pinch too hard and make a hole. So I like to keep it upside down because it keeps a nice round shape while I'm pinching. And then when I feel like I've done a good job, I can flip it upside down and let it sit. Whoop. There's my ball. Or I could turn it over and make a turtle. But that's how you make a pinch pot. And see how it's nice? It has thick walls. It's about the size of your pinky, right? That's what you want. You don't want it so skinny, right? So skinny like that, that it's paper thin, because that's way too thin. See that? See how thin that is? Versus this over here? So make sure you're doing an even, all the way around pinch, okay? So those are the three, four things I want you to work on, making a ball a coil, a slab, and a pinch pot. Once you've done all those, you can start playing around with it and seeing what else you can make. Maybe you can make a snowman using the balls. Maybe you can make a snake or a snail using the coils, okay? See what you can make with those techniques and just have fun with it, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.